Um, first off, hats off to Maryland. They're uh, man, they're tough. They're tough and well coached. They play hard. They play. They play together and uh, just make it tough on you. Make it tough on you in a lot of different ways. Um, I'm just happy for our guys. I'm so proud of our guys and just kind of the. You know, we weren't we weren't at our best. Um, it took us a while. I think picks three gave us a little bit of hope and a little bit of momentum going into halftime. Um, but what the second half really boiled down to is we just kept going into the huddle and talking about four minute battle, one possession at a time, and let's just crack it, right? Let's. I said, don't even look at the scoreboard. If we're doing the the right things, if we're playing the right way, the score takes care of itself. But let's these four minutes. Let's be the most together team. Let's be the tougher team. Um, I thought we did that. We made plays when we needed to. It, it stuck around ten for a while. But once we cracked it, um, our guys started to get some momentum and, and really go. So I'm happy for those guys. They they deserve to to go out like this um, in their last you know senior night game. Uh, what, what have you seen change with Cam in the last week or so, two weeks, whatever it's been? Uh, seems like he's a completely different player, especially from a confidence standpoint. Um, it's like he's he's been really aggressive trying to get to his spots. And we talk a lot about our, our like shot profile as a team. Um, you know, we want to get to the rim. We want to get layups. We want to shoot open threes. Um, we don't want to shoot a, you know, a boatload of mid-range tough pull-up twos. Um, but he's thrived on that <laughs> throughout his whole career. Um, so you know, I really talked to him or tried to talk to him about, like, be yourself and I'll coach the other guys. Right? Like, like the fear is Cam starts shooting some pull-ups, then, like, Somebody else thinks it's okay, so now they take two. And somebody else thinks it's okay, and they take two. Then somebody else takes another one, and now that's all we're getting, right? I was like, you be yourself. Just be yourself. And I'll, I'll continue to coach everybody else. And I, I think he's just he's just playing, um, like with no pressure. He's just playing free. Um, he's just been loose. He's been in attack mode, and he scored when he needed to. He's... He's been, you know, even when he was struggling, he's continued to work on his game. So now, like, he's very confident in his shot, um, you know, shooting open threes. So, like, he, he's been as big of a factor as us playing this well late in the year as anybody. Micah, you, uh, Maryland's defense was really good and attentive in the first half, but you guys either looked tired or tense or something. Was it, was it tight or what was it? I think so. I think they're a little bit of emotion of um, this being their last opportunity, right? To, to you know, this, the senior night, you're going through that. It's emotional, even though you like, even if you've had one before, even if you've done it, right? It's still emotional, and um, you also want to play well. I felt like after Northwestern, I told those guys that like. We did like our fans deserved us to play well uh, for how we finished the game here the last time they saw us, and you know maybe we were just like trying too hard. Maybe we put too much on us, um, but also they were good defensively. They forced you to play a lot of one on one. Like we only had three assists at halftime. Uh, we got to our spots a little bit better in the second half and forced them to help force them to rotate a little more and that helped us now start to swing the ball, start to spray the ball and, and get it to a bunch of other guys. So um, maybe it just took a while uh, and we were like probably too tight, probably too tense, right? Uh, and even like even myself, like, you know, I was on those guys, those officials early in the game uh, about different things that, you know, I thought I saw. But um, sometimes when I do that, it, it rubs off on them as well, right? I got to be better. When Courtney teed you up, did you deserve it? Oh, I 100% deserved that. <laughs>
Mike, uh, I'll ask you one loaded question and then uh, one big picture question. Do you guys, do you feel as if you've done enough uh, to make the NCAA tournament? And a follow-up, early in the season, the Big Ten season, there were a lot of games where you were blowing people out, but in tight games, you were struggling a little bit. That You flipped that. What happened there and how important is that going into this, to where you're going now? Yeah. Um, just playing together a little bit more, longer in the season. We, we, we're adjusting to how people are guarding us, so now late in the game, they can they can do things on the fly. They can talk to each other on the fly late game. Um, you know, I, I had a bolo of timeouts left, but it also allowed they didn't have any. It also allows them to talk about how they want to set their defense and what they want to do. When we can just go to a simple action that we've been running the whole second half, and now it's just communication between Pickett and Funk to say, who do you have on you? Do you want him on you, or do you want somebody else on you? Right, and now what do we do with the next guy? Right, it, it's all simple. It's all communication. We can do it fast, and we can just play without allowing other people to set things up. So um, they know what they're looking for. They know what they're trying to get to, and, and I think that's helped us late game of, of really executing. Um, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't know about like what we've done. Like we, we've, you know, we won 19 games. We won 10 games in the Big Ten. Um, like we've beaten good people. We've, you know, at home we've gotten some, you know, at one point in time the road was like really a struggle. We won three straight on the road. Like we're starting to take some question marks away, I think. Um, but I, I don't know. If, I, I would love, I would love if they would like put me on the committee. <laughs> I don't think like there's a first for everything, right? Like, why don't you let me come on the committee and like be a part of it. Um, but uh, we're just going to go to Chicago and keep playing. Um, we're playing our best basketball. We wanted to be playing our best basketball in March. We won five out of six. And that sixth game, we played really well for 20, 25 minutes, right? We're playing our best ball right now. And this is what we've been aiming for all season. Um, now we just, you know, go have fun. Let's go have fun. Let's, let's enjoy what we're doing let's enjoy playing together and this like this whole week is going to be a circus it's going to be a circus in Chicago because anybody can beat anybody on any night so um, you get rested you get healthy and you go play your best basketball Andrew and then Nate coach the arena was uh, pretty loud pretty rocking here this afternoon uh, how much did you guys feed on that and how does that affect you kind of down the stretch I thought it was great. I thought it was great how how, uh, how into it, how into it our fans were, and um, we needed it. We needed every bit of it, right? And, and you know, you got to do something to get them. You got to do something to get them going. And we started playing well and started scoring some baskets offensively. And then as we're going back to that other end to play defense, they were loud. They were yelling. They were cheering. And that spurred our guys. That it just spurred us, right? Like, I don't know. I, I like. I feel like sometimes when somebody's shooting it, like you can see that ball start to curve, right? That's a little bit of. That's a little bit of the fans. That's a little bit of the environment. Um, some of those missed shots, right? People shots that people normally take. Like a little bit of pressure when when the game gets close. The, the crowd gets into it, right? The, the basket gets a little bit smaller on that other end. And uh, uh, I thought our guys did a great job of, of really fighting through and letting the crowd kind of push us to where we needed to go. Me? You've uh, you practically begged these guys to be a team that the defense encourages offense. Was, was the second half your vision of what that should look like? Yeah, because uh, we had to dig deep a little bit and get some stops, right? We're not gonna we're not gonna bounce back from that, you know, twelve point deficit, ten point deficit without getting stringing together some stops, and we had to do it. Like I, I went with that group. I wasn't I wasn't gonna take them out unless Cam fouled out. Like I, I wasn't subbing. I was gonna let those dudes play the the, whole, the rest of the game. We went seven overtimes. They would have stayed in the entire time, um, but they're. They're getting good at knowing, knowing when to rotate, who might need help, who doesn't need help, when to stay at home, who needs help on the glass. Um, 
they're they're learning each other, they're figuring each other out, and when we can guard like that and get stops like that, like we put a lot of pressure on people on the other end. On Thursday, the the second season starts, and you've alluded to the circus that's going to begin already. If we had told you November, 19 and 12, 10 and 10 in the conference, would you have taken that? Was that the only option? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, I didn't want to put any expectations on this group. I just wanted us to go out and play as hard as possible and be a tough team to play against, um, play for each other. And I think they've done that. I think they've done that. And, um, like, what we've done, like, how they've come together. And, and like I said, I feel like we're peaking. Feel like we're playing our best basketball right now, which is what you want to do. Um, you don't want to peak too early. You don't want to, like, you know, be be walking in or limping into limping into the Big Ten tournament. Like our guys feel good about themselves. They feel good about themselves. They feel good about how they're playing. So, um, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. When you were out there talking to the crowd, you talked about telling the team to smile and you know play loose, and um, I feel like that's been a theme for for these last couple of weeks. Um, you know, how have the players really taken to that, and how I guess difficult is that for you to keep that sort of positive mindset when things in a game are going you know pretty poorly at times? Yeah, just reading, just having a feel for who we are as a team and what they need. Um, they, they don't have a problem being loose in practice or before practice or in the locker room or whatever. You know, it, it's we're down to the to the time in practice where, you know, we watch film and I'm saying, guys, give me an hour. I mean, an hour of focus. Let's be locked in totally on here's how we're going to attack this game. This Here's how we're going to guard. This is what our game plan is going to be. Give me an hour of focus. Then when that's over, like, Go dance and listen to music, do whatever you want to do, right? Um, and let's get to the games and, and feel good about our preparation and feel good about what we're doing. Um, and then, you know, the results, you know, if when you feel good about that stuff, like the results are okay. You know, I always talk about I hate losing. Like I don't, I'm not I'm not fun to be around when we lose. But also you can be okay with the results. Um yeah, you know, I would have been upset with how we played in the first half, but I think I put some of that on us. But how they responded, what they did in the second half, how they played, how they finished the game. Um, you know, if that ball, if Cam's ball doesn't go in, if that bounces out and somebody else gets it, Maryland gets it, we feel okay because we played better down the stretch, and that like that helps spur us on a run. Losing at Maryland, playing well late, helped push us into a run. This could have been the same exact way. Two more, Dave and then John. Dred's sudden involvement here in the second half, he not only hit a three, but then uh, he drove off a closeout and hit a layup, which he doesn't do too often. He's had a rough stretch. He's had to play defense against bigs. His quads must be killing him, <laughs> or his knees. Do you think his sudden involvement after not really being involved on offense gave your guys a, a lift thinking boy that's that must be a sign or, or am I crazy yeah it could be because he's so confident and yeah, sometimes it wavers right when you're struggling the confidence can waver a little bit but he's also a guy that like in this kind of environment in this kind of game he's not going to let you lose he's not going to let you lose um, so Defensively, he's down there standing guys up, battling, fighting in the post, not letting Reese get to like the spots where he wants to get. But then on the other end, he's making people make decisions of whether they switch or not or whether they stay with him. And he got free on some of those and shot it with so much confidence. And he hits one, then he misses one, but he comes right back and takes the next one. That's that confidence right there. right? If he doesn't shoot the next one, that's when it's like, I don't I don't know if he can stay in, right? Like if, whether it goes in or not, I don't know if he can stay in because he's not shooting the ball or playing confidently. And, when and he he's had up, moments like that where he passed up shots. Yeah. Why now? What do you think? Don't want to lose. This is it. 
right? This is this is the this is the end of the road. This is the ride, and um, like he, like when you get to that moment, like the, there's guys that you look to, and when we're in our when we're at our worst moments, when we need something to happen, he's a guy that always looks at me and says, "I got you, coach. I got you," and that like. I felt that from him today. He was going to help will us to what we needed to do to win. What was the, the design on that last play? Like, what shot were you looking to get uh, and on that last possession? And what was your perspective? Like, could you see Cam under there getting that rebound? What was your perspective as a we, uh We had gone to that a couple of times in the second half. And, and, you know, one, it was a matter of Funk communicating the pick, whether he wants to set this screen or not, who's guarding him, right? I think Hakeem Hart had started on Pickett in the backcourt, so we wanted to get him off of him because he's a really good defender. So we wanted to get him off of him. So Funk sets it and clears him. So now they were doubling from a lot of different areas. Well, as we're doing this and we're drawing this up, Cam's cutting through, and I told him to just stop kind of in the dunker because we already got three guys spaced, right? It, um, Funk is... Funk is up there, Miles is on the, and, you know, on the perimeter, Seth is on the perimeter. And if Cam goes out there as well, then it's easy for them to rotate once they double team, right? Uh, Pickett goes, he gets stopped, now he turns back and he gets to his shot. Well, Cam's near the basket already. Um, if he would have went to the perimeter, he probably never gets that. Probably never gets it. So, like, hats off to him for sticking it out and staying around there um, and, you know, going to the glass and, and helping us. Made a big-time play. and big time decision to kind of be in the right spot at the right time. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys.